Psalms 91. Good to have all you guys. I don't want to look past today, look into Thursday or next Sunday or anything else. I want to get what God's got for me here today. And I'm telling you, he's got something for us today. Amen. Before we get started, well, we, this is actually going to start. Um, I've got three recipes up here. And uh, since we're ending a year, starting a new year, um, I thought it would be appropriate to give some, at least three people, be the first three people that respond, okay? But uh, the first recipe I got, if you've ever, if you've ever eaten any of Bugs' uh, roast beef, I've got the recipe to how she, who wants it? Oh, Sorry, Blake. Maybe next time, brother. Maybe next time, son. You moved too slow. I didn't say raise your hand. I said first one up here. Come on. Okay, now, my daughter, she's supposed to be here today. She's sitting back. <laughs> I know. I didn't, but it's Brittany's chicken and dumplings. Coop ate some of her food while we've been working on the pavilion. When I said Brittany, he didn't care what it was. Amen. Oh, man, now I'm going to tell you something. My darling wife. <laughs> Gay's fried chicken. <laughs> Woo. Somebody asked me, the, I believe Pastor Mike Miller said, you know anybody can cook fried chicken? He loves fried chicken. He at gospel bird. Amen. Well, you three gentlemen just got blessed. Amen. Well, we're not going to leave anybody out today. Who wants a recipe for 2021 to turn your house into a home? How many want to have the greatest breakthrough, the greatest results, the most power-packed year that you've ever had in 2021? Okay, I'm going to give you a recipe. Now, you need to write this one down because I don't have it on paper. Well, you actually have it on paper, but if you've got Psalms 91 pulled up, okay, I wasn't going to read Psalms 91. I'm picking out about seven verses that we're going to expound on. But how do I not read it when I'm leaving the office coming over and Sister Deborah Rose, where's Deborah? Where's she at? There she is in the back back there. Hands me a typed out version of Psalm 91. <laughs> and it really startled me a little bit. But then when I began to read it, I thought, I got to read that to you. This is your recipe. Right here. And then we're going to go into a little deeper. Psalms 91. I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 16. We're going to read a little different. And, and wherever I put my name, I want you to put your name. Okay? So we'll start in verse 1. If Alan, that's my name, Alan. If you're writing a check, you spell it with two, L, two L's and an A. A-L-L-A-N. My name is Alan. Those of you who don't know me. If Alan dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, Alan shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Alan will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver Alan from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover Alan with his feathers, and under his wings shall Alan trust. 
His trust shall be Alan's shield and buckler. Alan shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at Alan's side, ten thousand at his right hand, but it shall not come nigh him. Only with his eyes shall Alan behold and see the reward of the wicked, because Alan has made the Lord, which is his refuge, even the most high, his habitation. There shall no evil befall Alan, neither shall any plague come nigh his dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over Alan to keep Alan in, his, in all his ways. They shall bear Alan up in their hands lest he dash his foot against a stone. Alan shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall he trample underfoot. Because Alan has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set Alan on high because he hath known my name. Alan shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with Alan in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy Alan and show him my salvation. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we expound this morning on Psalms 91, I pray, God, that your anointing, Lord, will reach out and touch the hearts and the lives of everyone present here today. Father God, I bind any hindrance, any demon or spirit that has been assigned from hell to disrupt, confuse, distort, Lord, any one's thinking in this house. Father, put your angels around us. Lord, let them bear us up this morning. Ministering spirits they are. God, ministering spirits of healing and deliverance, unity, faith, singleness of heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Move in a mighty way. Lord, God heals sick. Mm. Encourage the discouraged. Put the homes that are broken back together. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jerry, you and Brandy, good to see you. Well, these are some of my kids, too. Amen. Pray one day they come home, get off the mission field. Amen. Jaden, yeah, there's Jaden back there. Who's that other one sitting by him back there? He's not grown up so much. Amen. Good to see all of them. Good to see all of you. Talking about turning a house into a home. I, I, I was praying and here a week or so ago, and, and I'll be honest with you. Let me just let me go ahead and do a disclaimer here. Uh, I'm not going to try to um, make it seem like that I have had this word of knowledge that there's people in the house whose families are dysfunctional. Um, you know, I have had words of knowledge, but. This this message came from just a common knowledge of knowing of, of several families that are just absolutely dysfunctional. And wouldn't you know it? Either one of the spouse or both are not here today to hear a message that would transform their future. That's always the case. You know, being a preacher, Brother Chris. Common knowledge. 
that there's people that need needed to hear and they're going to say, well, I listen to it on live stream. It ain't the same. I need to lay hands on you this morning. The pastors need to lay hands on we need a, We need a, a ministry of the Holy Ghost here in the house this morning. Because if we want anything, we want a house to be a home. Amen? I got to hurry. A house becomes a home with time and love invested into establishing a comfortable place. That's when you hang pictures. Right now, my home is uh, decorated for Christmas. It's very, I don't know if this is a word or not, Christmassy. Is that a word? I've heard it before. Got 49 Christmas trees of some type in the house. Uh huh. Candles, lights. I mean, it's, it looks like the Galleria when it first barely lit it up. It feels homey. It's Christmassy. I love it. Been some time invested. Love has been invested. We've established a comfortable place. You can do that. You can spend a lot of money on a house. Make it comfortable. But what about the spiritual side of your home? Hmm? Does being a Christian mean your home will automatically be blessed and protected? Unfortunately, the answer is no. So what can you do to ensure your home is a safe place for your family? Well, what you do is you go to God's promises in his word. See, I handed out those three recipes. Those gentlemen jumped up and got them. They wanted a recipe. They wanted to know how to, how to prepare something that would taste good. Well, I'm going to give you a recipe. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to happen? You know, I, I'm going to tell you, I've been pastoring almost 40, well, youth pastor, senior pastor, 42 years. Right at I know how people, you know what some of you are going to do with it? Nothing. I know that. Because you're going to be the ones in the office next week. Won't know how to fix it. Hello? Don't get quiet on me now because I'm preaching good. You're going to be the one that's thinking, why, why, why is this happening to me? I know there's going to be that group. Then there's going to be this group here. Pastor Coop had a good definition. They got what they call the shovel technique. I'm going to be throwing it out and you're going to be shoveling it over your shoulder to the person behind you. In other words, it's not for you. Well, what you need to do is lay your shovel down. But what I'm about to preach is to every family member in this house. Every one of us need to move up to a higher level spiritually. Amen? When we look at the promises in his word, what are we looking at? We're looking at promises of protection that abound through the word of God. 
But there's one place where you can find all of them gathered together in a single power packed passage. And that's Psalm 91. Psalms 91 is God's covenant for divine protection. It covers every danger, every sickness, every disease, every assault, every crime, tornadoes, fire, and any other threat to your safety and your well-being. Can an elder or somebody that's saved say amen? amen? I realize in going as, as bold as I'm going to go in this that it's going to just shoot right over your head, some of you. But I'm going to stand flat-footed, old preacher said, and preach it anyway. And why? Because I know it works. Somebody said, well, you talked about your kidneys failing. You didn't hear all the story then. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. What do you mean? Devil formed a weapon against me to destroy my kidneys, but it didn't prosper. It failed. I'm not saying I'm not going to have weapons formed against me. There's some forming right now. But they're not going to prosper. Why? Because I believe Psalms 91. You see, there's good news today. And that good news is you can live in a fortress of Psalms 91. Protection. Amen. You can have protection. You can create an environment in your home that makes the devil flee. But it's like any promise of God. You have a responsibility to receive the promises of Psalms 91 by faith. It's your responsibility this morning to not use the shovel technique and cast what I'm casting over your shoulder to the next person. This is for me. Put your name where I put my name or where Deborah did. This psalm is your psalm. I'm going to be brief. We're going to look at seven strategies. Seven faith strategies for building a, a Psalm 91 home. Number one, feel the atmosphere. Feel your atmosphere. In verse 1 of Psalm 91, he said, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We live in two atmospheres. One is physical, the other spiritual. An atmosphere is defined as a pervading or surrounding influence or spirit, a general mood or environment. In Genesis 1, the earth's atmosphere was dark and it was empty until God spoke. It didn't automatically take on the spiritual atmosphere of God. He had to fill the atmosphere with what he wanted to occupy that space. The same is true for us. We have a spiritual atmosphere in our homes that we can energize with the power of the Holy Ghost. Literally. Or we can leave it blank for anything or anyone. To permeate and to feel. 
The ladder is much too dangerous. You don't want to do that. You don't want to leave your home empty. If we fail to play offense, we'll end up playing defense and wearing ourselves down with unnecessary trials. Amen. Some of you this morning are dysfunctional in your home, in your relationship. Amen. Because you are not applying the simplicity of the word of God to charge your atmosphere with the presence of the Holy Spirit. My God. I'm going to preach anyway. You can look at me like a calf at a new gate. I'm going to preach anyway. Let me tell you something. I've had a lot meaner congregations than y'all before. This congregation's weak compared to the ones I've had in the past 37 years. Man, I've had some devils come through him. So I, you don't scare me. You're too busy filling the atmosphere of your home with CNN News, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, and every other news channel you can name. Newsweek, I don't care who it is. Your car radio set on one of them. You got Sirius FM in your radio, but you don't play praise and worship. You got it on Fox News. You listen to all the doubt and unbelief and all the fear mongering. Come on, somebody up in here needs to agree with me because I'm preaching that you don't get quiet. Huh? I was around a group of people the other day and they was naming off movies that they know about I, don't even, I ain't never even heard of. Pastor, you ain't watch that? No, I don't watch none of that junk. I can tell you every movie Wells Fargo ever made. <laughs> That's a western. Amen. Gunsmoke. Andy Griffin. Or the Golf Channel. <laughs> what are you filling the atmosphere in your home with? Come on. Why are you fighting these unnecessary trials? Why is your imagination running away with you? Your spouse can't even speak to another person without you thinking he or she's having an affair with them. Your mind's filled with all kind of doubt and unbelief. You run fantasies through your mind 24 sevens. You dream about them. You think about them. You live them out. And you wonder why all hell is breaking loose in your home. Hello. We wonder why 2020 to some was so tragic. It's because they, what they filled their spirit with in 2019 and brought it in 2020. If you leave out of 2020 with the same garbage up in you, then 2021 is going to be worse. Woo. But I'm here to tell you today I came with an anointing to destroy the yoke and tell you how to do it. You young people, I see you here without your mamas and your daddies. You need to listen and take what I'm teaching this morning back to your home. Make it applicable in your house. Well, mama and dad won't let me play praise and we're playing in your room. He don't need to be loud. You can have it down to a soft, just a soft noise. But the enemy hears. Oh, come, let us adore him. Woo! Hallelujah. And you'll find yourself not fighting these unnecessary trials. 
How can I feel the atmosphere? Let me just give you something simple. I wish I could, I wish I could just, just take time to give you a whole list. These pastors will tell you, there's times when I tell them, go over in the sanctuary. We got an Alexa sitting right over there. Will she come on if I talk to her? She, I hope not. Okay. We use her during our prayer time. Uh-huh. I bought, or I didn't buy it. Somebody put one on my desk and said, I love you, Pastor. Left me Alexa. I don't know who, I don't know who it was, but I love whoever left it. Anyway, I took it home. I got it cooped to come down, set it all up for me. I'm not technical savvy. He came down and set it up. And all we got to do is say, Alexa. The light starts going around. Play praise and worship. Alexa, tell me where it comes from. Free on Amazon or something. I don't know. But anyway, she started playing praise and worship. Oh, man. I told her to play yesterday. You know what the first song was? Behold the Lamb. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what's playing in my house right now? We left out this morning. Alexa, play praise and worship. Well, that's foolish. Ain't nobody there. Yeah, you're right. We ain't there. Guess who else ain't going to be there? Huh? Devil ain't going to stay in no atmosphere where Jesus is being praised. Can't hear y'all. Turn left, get you an Alexa. I think Grady bought three the other night so I was sitting there listening to mine. He got online and bought three for $129. And Gay said, Dad, why don't you buy three? I was hoping Grady heard that and went ahead and bought six, but he didn't. Amen. Get you something. M what an MP3 player or something. Now get something. And put on some praise and worship or, or the word. Hey, I've got, I've got on my cell phone. I ain't got it with me. You know what I do a lot of times in my truck? I'll get, I'll get and, and I don't say, Lexi, I say, Siri. Yeah. <laughs> Play a YouTube video of Charles Johnson and the revivers pop up. You know, can't even walk without you holding my hand. <laughs> and I'll listen to Charles Johnson and I'll change it. Listen to somebody else sometimes it'll just change on its own when it gets through with that video. Listen to praise and worship. Come on somebody. Oh, I've heard all, all that in my life. I've heard that over and over and over again. Well, you know what, stupid? You've heard it, but you hadn't put it in place. Why don't you put it in place? Alexa, play praise and worship. Woo! Play some worship music. Speak the word of God out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak it. I know Gay thinks sometimes I'm mumbling, but I'm not talking to her. I'm speaking the word of God. Amen. Walk through the house. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. <laughs> You said, Lord, your word said, you never leave me, you'll never forsake me. Your word said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Devil, get off this hill. You don't belong here. This place has been dedicated to the Lord. Get out of here. Jesus lives here. This is where he dwells. Don't walk through the house whining over bills that aren't paid. Walk through the house praising God because he's going to make a way for those bills to be paid. Start speaking, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. You know what? You know how to feel the atmosphere? Fill it with praise and worship and with the word of God. I'm preaching a whole lot better than you're listening. Protect your atmospheres, number two. And 
Psalms 91, 2 says, He is my refuge and my fortress. Romans 12 and 2 tells us not to be conformed to this world and its ways. Media choices like television shows, movies, music that promote fear, worry, infidelity, divorce, anger, anger and sexual immorality oppose the word of God and weaken the protection around you. They weaken the protection around you and your family. When you take refuge in God, you remove yourself from the influence of those things that are not of God. You remove yourself from the voice of the world. You don't hear what the world is saying. I'm sad this morning because too many of our church leaders, spiritual leaders, are listening to what the world is saying. These things remove you from the influences of those things that, that, that are not of God. The, the praising and the worship. But when you listen to the world, they influence you. The psalmist in Psalm 119, in verse 37, he asked God. He said, he said, Turn my eyes from worthless things and help me purge your atmosphere of all that is not of you. Me and pastors sometimes talk. I'm guilty, Bob. I'm guilty. Probably all we'll talk about after Clemson beats Alabama again this year. It's what Alabama should have done. <laughs> That'd be the whole talk in, in the fellowship hall during breakfast, in the hallways, in the choir room. You know, that's all we'd be talking about. Hello? Whatever the latest event is in the world, that's what we bring into the house of God. Amen. Don't get quiet. This is, a, this is some strategy here that turn your house into a home. I'm talking about this house as much as your stick-built house. When I was a kid, you know what we done for church? We got an altar's. You come in, it'd be, it'd be the old saints be down in the altars praying, oh God, help us today, Lord. You wouldn't hear nothing about nothing except Jesus. And when the preacher got up to preach, the house was filled with the glory of God. Yes, amen. It takes us through praise and worship to get even close to setting ourselves up to hear the word. Don't be conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Purge your atmosphere with the word of God and with praise and worship. Number three. Oh me. Deal with wrong spirits immediately. Hmm. Psalms 91, 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Have you ever walked into a room and felt tension so thick you wanted to run the other way? Huh? A wrong spirit was most certainly to blame in that situation. James 3, 16 says, for where... Envy and self-seeking exist. Confusion and every evil thing 
are there. We have to deal with them wrong spirits immediately. Hello? When you set your love upon the Lord, you will desire to love others as he loves them. But if you step out of love, you are stepping into Satan's territory. Come on. Strife, unforgiveness, rebellion, and pride are all tools the devil uses to come into your home and stir up trouble. It's his purpose. His purpose is to divide, to destroy your home. Deal with that spirit immediately. Anybody here still believe that we can deal with wrong spirits immediately? It can be very costly to allow the luxury of a few quarrels or to permit your children to rebel and talk back to you. Because when you do, you are inviting a wrong spirit to operate in your home. On the other hand, the power of agreement is a supernatural miracle working power. Parents, you got children that are rebelling? You and your wife, you and your husband, get together. Don't hide. Join hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to tell you fathers, you daddies, you husbands, that prayer will become a lot more effective when you're the one doing the praying and your wife is doing the agreeing. Huh? So wives, I love you, but you ain't the spiritual head. And as soon as you quit trying to operate in that position, amen, unless your husband says sorry, he won't operate in it. He don't want to step up and take his spiritual responsibility. And you men that's not taking your spiritual responsibility, God help you. When all hell's breaking loose and you don't know what to do. So wives, join hands with your husband. Husbands, if you don't know how to pray, let me tell you what to do. Just do this. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Ain't that right, brother? Yes, Lord. Ah. Oh. Yes, Lord. Just make some kind of noise. Pray that demon. Take authority over that thing. Well, brother, that ain't but two years old. I laid hands on Caleb. He's my little two. He's the investigator. He loves to investigate everything. And he was doing that the other day, and I laid hands on his head. And I said, Jesus, before Nana, it's what I said. I said, before Nana whoops his butt, <laughs> you take his spirit off of him. I don't think you fool with nothing else the rest of the day. Jesus saved him. <laughs> take 
cathartic. Is anybody in this house listening to me? We ending this year. Let's go into this next year with the power and the authority of the word of God vibrating, living in our homes. Determine that you can stop attitudes or situations that cause destruction. Huh? Determine it. I ain't putting up with you, youngin. I'm not tolerating it. You're not dealing with the child. You're dealing with a spirit. And as soon as the body of Christ gets its eyes opened again and realize that we're not fighting flesh and blood, let me tell you something. You can't beat a devil out of a kid. You've got to cast it out just like you do anything else. Hello. Now if he or she needs a spanking, spank that butt. Hey man, I ain't opposed to spanking. I'm not opposed to whipping. But sometimes you got to deal with the spirit. It's destroying your home. Hello. Husbands and wives are trying to serve God, but they're letting their kids run wild. Spiritually. And they're bringing them demons into your house. Watch what they're watching. Check it out. There's things your kids don't need to be playing on that phone. There's things they don't need to listen to. Don't throw them off in the bedroom and let, let the devil be the babysitter. And then wonder why your home's being torn apart. Oh, I'm preaching so good this morning. Stop those attitudes. When any wrong spirit tries to take up residence in your home, deal with it immediately. Say this, spirit of strife, Spirit of unforgiveness, spirit of pride, spirit of rebellion, spirit of jealousy, spirit of lying. Get out of my home in the name of Jesus. I can stay here the rest of the day, but I'm going to move on. Number four. Somebody say number four. Oh, here's an old one. Matter of fact, I challenge any of you to look at those aluminum frames out there on that door and see if the, if the stains are not still on there. What are you talking about? Oil. Oil. <laughs> Brother Bob, come get this oil. Mm, I, want, I want you to do something for me. Take that oil and want your hands. Gretchen, come help him. Let's do this as a team. Uh, both y'all, don't you? Matter of fact, Gretchen, I appreciate you praying for me over here a while ago. I was feeling real bad. And you came over and laid hands on me and God healed me and touched my body. But y'all, don't these doors. Just, don't pay no attention to them now. They're not preaching. They're just carrying out an assignment. This is what you need to do when you get home. We do it at this church. I'm telling you, there's stains on the door lintels. That's so stupid. Yeah, and that's why you living in hell. That's why your hell, your house is a hell hole. Because this is stupid to you. God's stupid to you. Everything in God's word's stupid to you. Don't nothing work. We're all just here on, on Sunday to spend a couple hours to fulfill a religious obligation. Uh-uh. If you're listening right now, you're learning how to do something. Anoint your doors with oil. 
Look at Psalms 91 and 7. Coop, read it for me. Read it out loud. Psalm 91 and 7. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Read it again. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Anybody over here got the scripture over in the Psalms 91 verse 7? Anybody? Okay. Susan, stand up and read it loud. Anybody in this section got Psalm 91? So David, stand up, read it loud. Over here, somebody. Anybody got it open? Larry, you got it. Oh, Christopher, go ahead. When will that take place? When you anoint your house with oil. Look at the world around you. Even fellow believers. They seem to struggle with constant sickness and tragedy. Let's stop right here a minute. Let's make a confession. I'm going to receive. Say it. Psalm 91. I'm going to receive it by faith. Right now. While these people are struggling with constant sickness and tragedy. Word says, but under God's promise of protection, those evil spirits will not touch you. Christopher, stand up and read it again. Coop, stand up and read that again. Susan, get ready. David, get ready. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Susan. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. David. Can I can I just dance a little bit this morning? I said it ain't coming. It might knock on the door, but it ain't getting in. I don't know if I pronounce his name right, but if you quit looking, listening to Fauci. And the WHO. And listen to Jesus. I'm sorry for y'all that lost somebody. I'm sorry if you've been sick. But give God some praise. That you didn't stay sick. And that your lost one went to heaven and, and now with Jesus. Ain't come nigh me. When you stand in faith in Psalms 91 protection, you'll see those around you falling. But that evil won't come near you. Whew. One way to appropriate your faith for supernatural protection is to anoint your home with oil, just like Bob and Gretchen just anointed. You may not think anything of that. Mm -hmm. 
Bob Gretchen, there was a supernatural force released when you and your wife as elders, leaders, anointed man, anointed woman, when that oil touched the surface of that door, there was a supernatural power that was engaged. Oh, you can doubt it if you want to. If I can get just a few in here to agree with me, we can see a manifestation of the glory of God. Ooh. Hallelujah. You see, all represents the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a symbol of faith in God's ability to cleanse and make holy. It's an act of consecrating your home to him. Let me ask a question. See how many people I can get to be bold enough to answer me correctly. How many of you have anointed your home with oil in 2020? In 2020? Huh? Mm -hmm. Does it work? And those of you that hadn't, you're going to go home and anoint it today for 2021? Huh? And those of you anointed for 2020, you going to do it again? Do it again. It don't hurt. Do it every day. Do it every, every time you think about it. Go through the house anointing it with oil. Hello? Well, I ain't got no oil. We were in the woods deer hunting one time. And one of the guys I was hunting with got sick. Hey, son. Give me some oil, somebody. This is my baby boy. He knows what healing is. Come here, mama. My, uh, if anybody loves him, Christopher, you anoint him. Elders, you anoint him. Y'all want to see this work? Well, just watch it work. Father, Lord, the times that I've laid hands on him, even as a little child, and you moved, you're moving today. Lord, you said in your word that we'd have joy unspeakable and it would be full of glory. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every demon of confusion, every demon of sickness. God, this man has stepped up this morning as the spiritual leader of his house. Father, you said whosoever would come unto you, you would in no wise cast them out. Now, Father, restoration of joy, restoration of healing, restoration of peace, a sound mind. I rebuke fear in the name of Jesus. I rebuke division and strife and discord and contention in the name of Jesus. And I release the power of joy into his life. Take off this garment, the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of praise. Take off the spirit of heaviness and put on the garment of of praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Man, God showed up. Somebody said, I didn't see nothing. You don't have to see it. <laughs> I said, God showed up. God showed up. God showed up. You respond to the word of God, God's going to show up. 
I love you, son. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you got grown kids just like him and my daughter. Grandchildren. Not the house. When they come in. This house. Y'all didn't believe me, did you? Son, you've been here the whole service. Did, when did you walk in? Just now. Bob, I think you anointed the doors. I don't know what it's going to take, Brother Christopher. We anointed the doors. The shepherd of the house, his son, wayward. Needing help. Come here, T. Tom. I know you feel like you ain't worthy to come down here, son. <laughs> this man right here helped me build this house. The devil's been on him. His daddy, me and his daddy were best friends. His daddy helped me build this house. T. Tom been coming by. We've been praying with him and we've been feeding him. And I want God to make a way for him. He lives right down here, but he's got some needs that we're going to try to help him with. We won't. <laughs> Father God, Lord, open open ways for Tita. <laughs> Lord, open ways, God. Touch him in his body. I know how hard he works. I know how strong he was. Heal him, Lord. Heal him, Lord. We anoint him with all. In the name of Jesus. Break the yoke. Woo! Where's Tanya Smith? Tanya Smith, come here, Tanya. Get all the handkerchiefs you've got over here, baby. Some of the elders' wives, get over here with her. Lay them, lay them handkerchiefs up here. Pour some oil on them. We'll clean all up if you make a mess. Oh, this ain't the way church's supposed to be, is it? Oh, yeah, it is when God gets in it. The routine gets broke. The, the religious traditions get broke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love you, Teton. Anoint them handkerchiefs. Anoint them. Anoint them. Hallelujah. Yeah, Tom, stay there as long as you want to, son. Oh. Oh, Jesus, you're in the house. Woo. Woo. I'm going to move on and y'all just keep down here, man. Others going to need to come to the altar. Y'all pray for them when they come. Number five, number f the fifth strategy. <laughs> After you anoint with oil, draw a bloodline. <laughs> Psalm 91.10, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. There's power in the blood of Jesus. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18.19, we are told that we were redeemed from the curse with the precious blood of Christ. So when the devil tries to nose it, his way into your, your lives and your home, we overcome him by the blood of the lamb. Draw a bloodline. I told this story before. Preacher, an evangelist was preaching. He was out of state, out of, out of the state he lived in. A neighbor called him and told him 
that there had been a rabies epidemic break out in the, especially in the fox in their area and that the fox had actually come in people's yards and had jumped on children rabid this pastor and his wife Pat, they got together in that prayer of agreement and the pastor prayed and pled the blood of Jesus and he said father I draw a bloodline on my property but great he didn't leave and go home he had somebody there sitting with his children a sitter but he went home the next week and he got out and walked his property had several acres he and his wife got out and walked it found five dead fox and their noses was just over the property line on his property oh I don't know about that that's called you ain't never drew a bond line You don't know about it because you ain't got faith in Psalm 91. I'm telling you, I know the blood works because I have done it before and I have seen it work. I'm going to tell something this morning that I have never told in my life. My son, my oldest son was living next door. And I had went over. He had taken too much medication. And his daughter Tori came, got me, and I went over and prayed. He was in a chair, unconscious. And I prayed, and he gained consciousness. But I'm going back to my house, and here's what I said. I said, Lord, I said, I don't know how long. I can take this. I said, 30 years we've been dealing with this drug problem. I don't know how long I can take it. This was about four or five months before he passed. Spirit of the Lord said, Stop right here. And I stopped in between his house and mine. He said, draw a bloodline. I literally weighed by, took my finger and pointed at that 15 acres and turned like this and said, in the name of Jesus, I draw a bloodline. Didn't know it at the time, but just a few weeks later, he gave his heart to Jesus and was serving the Lord, Brother Tom. <laughs> you know what he was. You was with him in a lot of those excursions. Huh? It's good to see you in the house this morning, son. God fixing to turn things around for you. He's already turned them around. Ain't fixing. You got some new blue jeans yesterday. Yeah. Got a new belt. Well, that wasn't new, but they were new to you. <laughs> new to you, ain't they, both? Huh? Yeah. And tell them what might happen to you today. Brandon gave his life to Jesus, went home to be with him just a few months after that. But he'd went to hell. Say, I didn't count it loss. The blood kept those demons away never done anything else gave his heart to Jesus started telling people matter of fact J.D. Barkley is with Jesus because Brandon Kendrick was stopping at J.D.'s house every day J.D. you need to get right with God Brenda Barkley telling them both he was so sick he couldn't get out of his jeep He'd call them out to his Jeep. Tell them about Jesus. 
wouldn't tell me and mama because he said I done told them so many times you know I don't want them to hear it I want them to see it but when did it start when I stood there in between my house and his and turned in a circle and said in the name of Jesus I draw a bloodline let me tell you something I draw a bloodline around this campus every time I pray in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus some said well it don't work well you say what you want to say I'm gonna keep saying in the name of Jesus I draw a bloodline you know what it don't work for you if you don't believe it works just like the recipe that we gave them three pastors this morning. It won't work unless you put the ingredients into the bowl and stir it up and do what the ingredients. It won't work unless you put the ingredients into your life and into your home and then you'll see God begin to change things. Plead a bloodline. It wouldn't hurt to stand and do it right now. You don't have to be at home to do it. Number six, dispatch your angels. Oh yeah. You don't, you don't, let me tell you something. You can't see them. I have had people, uh, God open people's eyes and they've seen them. They won right there. They won right there. And there's one right there. And there's one right there. There's one right there, there, and 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 there. Why do you know? I told them to be there. He will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. One of the ways that God carries out your deliverance, your protection, is through angels. You literally have angels at your service. You know what took me through that automobile 61 years, 62 years ago? Almost 63. Whew. What caused my body to pass through that automobile? My angels. Every Sunday morning when I preach, I know they're there. And when I pray, I don't pray by myself. They there with me. They're ready to move. Brent, you're here. You remember the night, son, when you was over by the airport. I was it's uh, uh, search or um, inspecting sewer lines, and you was been over the manhole. And looked up and the man was standing right in front of you with a machete. <laughs> and you stood up and looked. And when you looked, he turned and run. You know what he saw? That night, when we lived right back here, and you was just out of high school. And you were leaving to go work the night shift. And when you walked by our bedroom window, I told mama, I said, I don't feel right. Something's wrong. And I said, let's pray. We prayed. And you know what I prayed, son? I said, God, put your angels around my son. Angels of protection. Put them around him. You know what, Brent? You're six, back then, you were six, five, about 300 pounds. Just out of high school. All everything in football. Amen. But it wasn't you that that demon-possessed man was, was what he, he saw when you stood up. What he saw was them angels. Pastor, I ain't coming back here. You're flaky. You can call it what you want to, but I'll live and not die. And my children 
are going to be blessed. And my home is going to be blessed. And I'm going to have the presence of God. Not, not invading spirits. Not spirits of doubt and unbelief. Not spirits of division and strife and divorce. Some of you in here talking about divorce. Get that out of your house, boy. Get that out of your house. God didn't bring you together with your wife for you to divorce. You stop believing that. You stop thinking that. Stop speaking that. What do you mean? What am I going to do? You do what I'm telling you to do. Amen. Put angels around the house. Draw a bloodline. Don't deal with those demons a year from now. Deal with them immediately. Put your angels out. Pray and speak the word. His truth shall be your shield. Psalm 91 4. The word of God's a weapon, it's a two edged sword. How can you pray for protection? Pray Psalm 91 over your home, your family. Commit it to memory. Make it part of your heart, part of your spirit. Pray it every day. Get a copy of it. Put it on your refrigerator. Why? It works. It works. Anoint your house with oil. It works. You know how you can turn your house into a home? Quit worrying about it being 12 o'clock on Sunday and stay until God gets through. Amen. You that's watching my live stream, whether it's by necessity or want to, do what I'm telling you. Take these seven strategies and apply them. Oasis, if we'll do this, if we'll do this, 2021. <laughs> Amen. And if you ain't got nothing else to do after you do it at your home, come here. Help us do it here at the church. Walk around the property. Huh? Bind Satan. I still believe we have power over him. Loosen the angels. Hebrews tells us they're ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation. Angels of deliverance. Angels of mercy. Angels of grace. Angel of deliverance. Angels of peace. They're here. I told them to be here. They're here. Well, they're going to put him in a nursing home. You'll be there before I am. Because every word spoken on me will come back on the head of the one that spoke it. <laughs> I'll have my sound mind when I'm 90. I'll still be up here preaching unless y'all want to build a new church somewhere. I'll help you build it. Oh, he, You know, I, I think sometimes the devil, y'all ever watched that movie, True Grit? John Wayne. You know, kind of at the end when he's out there in that big field, you know, old Glenn Campbell done been knocking the head up there. He got that 50 caliber rifle, you know. And old John Wayne's down there on his horse going to arrest them, them uh, outlaws. And he tells them to give themselves up. And one of them told him, you know what he told him? But then, you know, that's mighty big talk. That's what I feel like the devil tells us every time we speak the word. He's out there saying, that's mighty big talk. You know what? It would be big talk if I was talking in me. But I ain't talking in me. I'm talking in Jesus' name. Greater. Huh? Greater. Is that scripture worn out? Is that scripture lost its power? I plead the blood. Is the blood lost its power? The blood lost its ability? Come on. Has it got old with you? Uh, 
Well, I, I didn't see it work. You didn't work it. You didn't work it. Work it. Do it. Stand with me. All over the house. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to give you a commission. Go home, draw a bloodline. Go home, anoint your house with oil. If you got rebellious kids, take the oil. Slap them on the head with some oil. <laughs> Tell them I ain't putting up with that devil no more. <laughs> Lord, if he's standing there beside you now, get the oil now. <laughs> hey, parents, grandparents, if you got some, here's some, here's some, here's some anointed uh, prayer handkerchiefs right here in the name of Jesus. Put your holy anointing on them. They've been anointed with oil. Come get you one. Come get you one now. Quit laying back like a bunch of, you know, doubt and unbelieving people. I've said there's some cloths up here anointed with oil. Come get them. Is somebody sick? Get it. Get it. Get it. Put it in your pocket. Put it on your pillow. Put it under that rebellious kid's pillow. Put it in their backpack. Put it somewhere they'll come in contact with the anointing of God. Y'all saw it work. You saw it work. You know why it worked for me? Because I believe it. When Bob Gretchen anointed these doors, I believed it. And then my son, whom the devil's been attacking, came in. It works, Bob Jones. It worked because you and Gretchen believed it. A few more prayer cloth up here. We got any more, Tanya? We got any more prayer cloths, baby? Is that it? That's all of them. That's good. They've been sitting there too long. We need to cut up some more. They've been there too long, haven't they, Tanya? Been there too long. They going to work today. And they took handkerchiefs and aprons from the Apostle Paul. And when the people came in contact with that anointing, demon spirits left their body. Many were sick. They were healed. The same thing's going to happen with those prayer cloths. Here's what I'm saying. It'll happen because it's the Word of God. I'm dealing with it now. You gonna deal with it today? What about you guys? Y'all gonna deal with it today? You got children going to hell. I don't want you to get saved today because you're gonna die tonight. I want you to get saved because you're gonna live tomorrow. I'd rather for my child to be saved serving God than I had to be for him or her to be the CEO of the Southern Company. Amen. Bind them devils. You got, a, you got a teenager sexually active? Oh, Pastor, don't talk like that. I need to talk like that because some of you got some kids that are sexually active. Bind that demon of fornication. I got anybody in here who believes anything? Bind those demons. Lord, take the desire away from them until they're married. You might ought to add a little bit to it in the culture we live. Don't let them have a desire for the other, for the same sex. <laughs> Just take all desire that they won't fornicate. Y'all not listening to me? Well, they're not going to do that. 
<laughs> you did. And then we have to deal with the, Dr. Massey, we have to deal with the multiple personalities, what, what the counselor might call it. It ain't nothing but demon spirits is all it is because they've had sex with so many different people. Let's take authority over it. Do it, when, I, do it when them kids are young. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release it all to you right now. Pastor Mike, y'all sing? I told the pastors, be ready to pray. I'm ready to pray. I don't know if you're ready to get prayed for, but I'm ready to pray. We need, a, we need a move of God. We need those angels to come on down here and help us. So as Pastor Mike and Susan sing, I'm going to be down here to pray for you.
Right now, every married couple that's needing God to move in your marriage, no matter what it is, now's the time. The water's stirred. Pastor says he don't want to break the anointing that's on him right now, but if you'll come up here, there's deliverance for your marriage right now. There's deliverance for your marriage right now. Every married couple, you need something from the Lord in your marriage. You need a move of God in your home. You need a move of God in your marriage. Now's the time. Now's the time. Now is the time. Don't wait after the service. Now is the time. The water is disturbed right now. Now is the time. Come down the center aisle if you can. Everybody that's coming for prayer, come down the center aisle. Please, everyone. The center aisle. If you have to go around, go around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Last night, I had a dream, prophetic dream. I'm not going to tell the dream, but in the dream, I believe God's going to speak to a, a person or persons. In the dream, there was a bondage in that dream that was, a, a, that, that was affecting a, 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 a church. But in your case, there's a bondage in your family, in your life that's affecting your marriage. But God wants you to be delivered from that bondage. Silence. 
How many can say chains have been broken in my life today? Come on, if you really believe it, give him a praise. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. The chains have fallen. Look at somebody and say, I hear the chains falling off of my life. I, I hear the chains falling. Get somebody by the hand right now. Father, we thank you for what you have spoken into our lives today. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us a recipe to turn our house into a home. Lord, we're going to anoint our homes. We're going to protect our atmospheres. We're going to feel the atmosphere. We're going to deal with demonic spirits quickly in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we're leaving this place today changed by your glory, changed by your power, changed by your authority that resides in us in the mighty name of Jesus. And every chain that the enemy's tried to put on our minds, in our marriages, in our homes, in our ministries, even in our church, in the name of Jesus is broken. Is broken by your power in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen. amen. And leave with a shout of victory in your mouth today. God bless you. Amen.